Hello everyone. So I'm making this video because I've been receiving a lot of questions lately on Facebook, Reddit and YouTube and I hope to answer some of those questions. I'll be making future videos um, addressing the other questions uh, but in this video I'll try and address the most important ones. Mm -hmm. So one of the questions I get asked very often is how should I prepare for step one when it becomes pass fail? Again I would recommend focusing on questions as much as possible. I believe that if you do only AMBOSS, UWorld, and the NBMEs, I, I always say the NBMEs are the most important resource, and then AMBOSS and UWorld, if you do those three very well, NBME 20 to NBME 30, I think uh, this is more than enough for a pass. Um, unless you have a weak foundation and you haven't uh, been in touch with the academic subjects for a while, in that case, I'd recommend going over uh, Pathoma videos or Boards and Beyond, especially for the biochemistry, pharmacology, and the basic sciences in Boards and Beyond. This could be of help um, before starting the questions. But otherwise, I would recommend you get straight into the questions and uh, focus on, on those three resources, the NBMEs, AMBOSS, and UWorld. Um, another question I get asked uh, very often is how are you able to balance between you world uh, sorry how are you able to balance between uh, school and uh, the step prep and I believe the best way you could do this is by integrating uh, the system you're studying at uni with your step prep for example if you're studying GI right now I'd recommend that you do uh, the UWorld or AMBOSS GI questions, or if you're watching Boards and Beyond, then watch the uh, relevant Boards and Beyond videos. Because if anything, this would actually help you help you perform better at uni, and it would help you perform, and uni would also help you perform better on step. So I think this is the most efficient way to do it, to try and integrate as much as possible all the relevant material. Um, in my case, it wasn't that easy because the um, majority of my step prep was during year four, which had uh, low yield uh, subjects or rotations like uh, ophthalmology, ENT, community medicine, toxicology, and tropical medicine. Many of those uh, rotations are low yield for step one. So it was a bit uh, difficult to integrate. But if, uh, if you're in something like year five or still in the academic years, it would be even easier. Um, Another important question is, um, should I do a second pass of UWorld or another question bank? Now, I cannot emphasize how much of a waste it is to do a second pass of UWorld. At least in my case, it was that was my biggest regret regarding my step prep, doing a second pass of uh, UWorld. And uh, I believe it's much more efficient to be seeing new questions and thinking the entire process from the beginning and reaching the answer better than uh, doing a second pass of UWorld. Also, my exam was not even closest to UWorld. It was closest to the NBMEs, then uh, NBMEs and Pure 20 then AMBOSS, then UWorld. So if anything, if you're actually gonna do a second pass of any QBank, it should be the NBMEs or AMBOSS and then UWorld. Um, and that's actually what I'm planning to do for step two. If I'm going to do second pass, it will probably be of AMBOSS. Uh, and yeah, the NBMEs too. Um, another important, a very important uh, uh, question I, I receive is uh, how, how were you able to prepare for this step without Boards and Beyond? Or why, did not, why didn't you use Boards and Beyond? Um, okay, so there are a couple of reasons. One of them being that I found out a bit late about Boards and Beyond. Uh, but I still had I had time, like if I wanted to go, I think I found out like six or a bit more, actually almost a year before my exam. But the reason I um, decided to ignore it is because I tried to be as efficient and as quick as possible by incorporating active learning into my step prep, um, which, which is basically doing solving questions and doing uh, flashcards. So I tried to incorporate active learning as much as possible into my prep 
and avoid anything that's passive, like reading textbooks or watching videos. And I think for me, this was the quickest way to uh, improve my score. I avoided anything that's passive. Sometimes I would uh, open first aid and just, just for reference if there was something I didn't know. But uh, I always kept up with my reviews and I did questions regularly unless I had a university exam. Um, finally, there's a question I get asked very often, even though I, I've wrote, uh, written this multiple times, how much did it take me to prepare? Um, overall, I, I took, it took me like an, a year and a half, a year and seven months to prepare uh, for step one. That's, uh, that was um, in the middle of year three, and then I took the exam after I finished uh, year four. Uh, during the summer holiday of year four. And um, my dedicated period was eight and a half weeks. And I studied seven to nine hours a day during that dedicated period. But during uh, during uni, uh, this could also actually help people who are asking about uh, how, how to balance between uni and um, the USMLE preparation. So during year four, which in my opinion is, is very tough to integrate with step one, um, this is this is how my day went by. So, I'd wake up at around four to five a.m. That's my usual wake up time, and I sleep at around eight eight a.m. So yeah, and uh, waking up at four a.m. helped me a lot because I used to have those uh, lectures at eight a.m. So when I woke up at four a.m., I had enough time to go through forty or eighty questions, one or two blocks. Um, and I do not always review, as you may have seen in my previous video. I only uh, read the explanations for difficult questions that I did not fully understand or questions um, that I got wrong. So that helped me go through questions very quickly. And then I would leave home at around uh, 7, 7.30 to, to be there at uni at 8. And um, after I, I finish, I think I'd finish her around like... Uh, 11, 11 a.m., 11, 12 p.m., and um, after that, when I come back home, I would uh, study the study the lecture I took at uni, which would take me like two hours, and then I would resume my Anki flashcards, the reviews and the new cards, and until I sleep. So that was basically my routine throughout uh, year four, and obviously I had a lot of breaks in between. And sometimes on transportation, I would uh, do my flashcards. I think this is uh, another way that I, I tried to maintain efficiency. Um, whenever I was on transport, I would uh, take out my phone and do some of my reviews. I'll try and avoid doing new cards on transport because uh, I need to un understand them very well. So I would keep those for home. And uh, yeah, that's all guys. And uh, I'll be making another video very soon to answer any other questions uh, you guys have and uh, you could drop any of your questions below in the comments and I'll address them in the future video. Thank you for watching.